When I was young, well, I used to wait. On my master, give him his plate. And pass that bottle when he got dry. And brush away the blue tail fly. I Jimmy crack corn, and I don't care. Jimmy crack corn, and I don't care. Jimmy crack corn, and I don't care. It's not too bad. My master's gone away. Now the horse he run, he jumpy pitch. Throw my master in the ditch. He died and the jury wondered why. And the story was the blue tail fly. Oh, well, the Jimmy crack corn. And I don't care. Jimmy crack corn. Come on, I don't care. Just keep Jimmy singing, Josh, like nothing is wrong. Care. We got company. How many of them do you think there'd be? Well, I don't know, and I don't know where they are, but you just keep on singing while I try to locate them. <laughs> Would you scoot my rifle a little closer to me? has charm to soothe the savage beast Lord of mercy Dan and you're gonna blow us up mm, as I was a walking down Mulberry Street with a hey ho blow the man down three little engines I happened to meet tell me that Time when we blow them down. Right now. Would you mind telling me what that was all about? I reckon there's three young bucks trying to count coup on us. Oh, boy, they sure counted a coup on me. I wish you'd look at that guitar. I reckon you can hang a feather on it and keep it as a souvenir. This close to home, now I gotta turn around, make a side trip to Ford's Run. Ford's Run? Well, if you can think of another decent place where I can get a guitar, I'd like to hear about it. See that mark? Hans Vogel, he's an old German fella. He turned that out for me just before I left. You want me to go along with you? Oh, no. Ain't no use in both of us being late. I'll be all right. Who did you say? Hans Vogel. Question whether he's got one of these already built or he's going to make one. And two, while I'm here and you're so itchy to know, I thought I might look in on Andy Wharton. He's an old friend.
What about Hans Vogel? He an old friend, too? Well, I'll tell you. He not only made me one of these, but he taught me how to tune it, which is something he should have showed you. And then he taught me how to play it. Then he gave it to me as a gift. Does that answer your question? How was it you was able to understand him? What do you mean? Well, I mean all them funny noises coming out of that square head. Ain't swai. Ah, ah, bitter, bitter, bitter. Now, I say if a man can't talk the language any better than that, he ought to shut up. Or go back where he come from now, wouldn't you say that? I never had any trouble. Oh, how's that? Don't tell me you speak that foreign lingo of his. Yeah. He taught me some of that, too. A few words. Well, now, that can be mighty useful to a man these days, can't it? I mean, if he happened to know any redcoats. I don't get your point. Well, all them uh, Hessian soldiers, you know, the British been bringing over here by the boatload to do their fighting for them. Mercenaries, I think they call them. That means they'd shoot anybody if you pay them enough. Oh, not you. Not you, because you like them so much. But me, him, him, any of the rest of us here. That's the kind of people they are, and they're all alike. Well, you weren't around when I was here, so I don't know what you're like. I'm a hundred percent patriot, mister, and proud of it. Now, what are you? I was going to say, Mr. Vogel was around when I was here. As a matter of fact, he is around almost before anybody. Or Wharton's Mill, or the store across the way, or this tavern. I think maybe he might have staked out his property and built his home down there on that stream before this town even had a name. And unless he's changed an awful lot, I think he's just about as good a patriot as you'd find anywhere nowadays. Oh? Well, there's, uh, there's just one thing. You, uh, you never answered the man's question. What was that? Oh, what kind of a patriot you are? Now, me? I'd just like to know who sent you and what you want here. Not that it's a bit of your business, but I answered that one time, and I think it's about enough. You know what I think, mister? I think you're a liar. Now, what I think is, he's just going to go outside, get back on his horse, and ride out the way he came. Now, you get it, mister. We don't want your kind in this town. And if you know what's good for you, you won't be back. What is this? What's going on here? He wanted to see Hans Vogel. Oh, Andy. Why, it's Josh. Josh Clements. <laughs> a nice, warm homecoming, Andy. Oh, now, look. How, how are we Why, to know that he was... brainless? Haven't you done enough to this town? Oh, we just... We, we, we oh, just saw... shut him. up and get out. Give him a drink. Yes, sir. <laughs> Next time I come, I'll be waving the flag and beating the drum. Sorry about this, Josh. Except for the chance that give me to see you again. Too bad it was a wasted trip for you. Wasted? Yeah, didn't they tell you? Vogel hasn't lived here in almost two years. Early in 78. That don't make sense. You know what that place meant to him. Yeah, but the, uh... He pulled out, though. Nobody knows where. He'd had to been run out. They ran him out, didn't they? He was different, foreign. That made him an enemy. And well, about that time, I was having to take on some outside help. Wasn't long before I found out what they were like. 
You just did. Well, I better go. You like that guitar, Josh? Bring it here. Well, it hasn't been a completely wasted trip. It's yours. But that belongs here, Andy. I I'd be glad to pay him for it. Well, you'd have to pay me if I let you. When Ben left shortly after Vogel, I took over this place, mainly to keep it from one of them for all the good it did. Well, I guess I might as well be on, heading on back. Andy, maybe you'll tell me how I can thank you for this. That's easy. Just give me a little advance notice next time. Here, I can't even ask you to stay with us. Man and I had taken off a of Pineville first thing in the morning. That's why we needed the extra hand. Well, you give my best to Amanda, will you? Do it. Who? Hey, and Andy, if you ever need to reach me for anything, try Daniel Boone at Boonesville, all right? I'll remember that. Godspeed, Josh. for a bit of dust on him yet. Why would anybody? You know as well as I do what's on the other side of that ridge. Yeah. I'll wait here. You better go get Lane. Mm-hmm. And that ain't all I'll get.
What are you doing here? Wait a minute. Hold on. Now, wait a minute. Now, now listen. Now, I'm not going to hurt you. I just want to talk to you a little bit. Uh -huh. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, I'll put it back, Mr. I didn't mean no harm. Nobody's saying you got to put it back. And you don't mean any harm, and I don't mean any harm. Please, mister, I ain't supposed to be here. Who says? My pa. He says it's a bad place. But you don't think so. Well, I'll vouch for one thing. It didn't used to be. Besides, I'm not going to tell on you, that's for sure. You know, I had a guitar not long ago in worse shape than that one. At least you can play yours. Oh, I ain't very good. Mr. Vogel is just starting to show me when. You won't tell him about that either, will you? Now what? Pa knew I used to sneak over here. He'd be mad fit to tie. I heard him one time say that Mr. Vogel was an out-and-out -out proof traitor. How would you like to see one of those with all the strings on it? Maybe teach you how to play a tune. Come on, I got it with me. Get your hat. What's your name? Tim. Tim. Mine's Josh. You're a fine young man, Tim. Just sit down there. Now, let's see. Forgot I had a couple of pretty sour strings on there. Just be a second. We're gonna have to do something about that hat. I can't even see your face. You used to see quite a lot of Mr. Vogel, did you, Tim? He wasn't always here when I come. Sometimes he'd be gone for a while. Must have changed his habits. He never left here in all the time I knew him. Boy, oh, I used to come over here just like you. How do you think I learned to do this? A little better, huh? Where do you suppose Mr. Vogel went on those trips? You'd never talk about it. Just act like he'd never been away, like he didn't want nobody to know. Mm -hmm. Well, anyhow, all you gotta do is watch where I put my fingers and then kind of keep your ear peeled for the tune. Well, you already know this. Him. I'll listen to you. That's just it. We never got much past there. Well, that's where I was a whole lot luckier than you. But I'll tell you what. You just fire away, and I'll show you the rest of it. Almost like he'd have done it. Wait a minute. Put one there. There, this, go right there. All right, break it. See you there? You could almost say Mr. Vogel himself taught you that. And I say it's a downright pity he couldn't have heard it. Sure would like to know where he is. You would? You want me to show you? It ain't far. Uh, sure, Tim, that'd, that'd be fine. All right. Me and him used to walk around 
coming down here all the time. Right near the stream. He always said it was the prettiest part of his land. He was never gonna build any mill or cut another tree, didn't he? That's what he said. And that's where he is, right over here. You see? I don't I don't see anything, Tim. But there, there, where those flowers are. Just sprouted there by themselves. And no place else. Like I was away of telling you. What what are you trying to tell me? That he's down there under the flowers? How do you know? Well, last time I come to see him, there was this house all tore up and him gone. So I went looking for him. And there was this place right here where somebody's been digging. And all I know is I never seen him again after that. But that doesn't matter. Look, Tim, couldn't he have just left, moved away? He'd have told me. And he said he'd never leave. And nobody could make him. And I reckon he never did, neither. Did you ever tell anybody else about this? You, Paul, maybe? And him find out I've been coming here? Yeah, I forgot. You couldn't very well tell anybody, could you? Except me. And I appreciate your confidence, too, Tim. You know, there's a way that a fella could prove something like that for sure. Oh, no, I would never. No, sure you wouldn't. I guess we just kind of better keep this to ourselves and... Did you ever see this before, Tim? No, sir. You suppose that there'd be a spade up in Mr. Vogel's barn? I can find out. You better do that, Tim. You! Listen! Here. Nothing, Pa. Nothing. I was just... You were just. You were just. Didn't I tell you never to come out here? Didn't I tell you that? Now you get on home and don't you even look back. Pa, don't hurt him. Did you hear what I said? You better do what he says, Tim. That kid of yours. Now there's him to worry about. Well, if you're thinking of bullying him, too, save your strength. He was out here looking for birds. He's got a whole mess of country to look for birds in. How come here? Well, I picked him up to show me the way. It's been a long time. He don't know a thing, nothing. What makes you think there's something for him to know? Well, you, the lot of you, the way you've been acting. Why didn't you just tell me that Vogel had moved away? You're on private property, mister. And we don't take kindly to trespassers. Matter of fact, mister, I think it's about time you learned this whole town is private property. Looks like we're gonna have to teach you a lesson. Just help him get his horse started. Stop it! Stop it! Pa! Lane! Leave him be! Uh, 
Boy! The next time I tell you to do something, you do it! Now, you get on home. You go on, you get. Timmy! Look at me. I said, look at me! That's better. Look, boy, what you've seen here. Well, there's just some things grown men they just got to do. Well, if, if your ma was alive today, she'd tell you that herself. Now, you, you go on, you, you make tracks like I told you. One ain't gonna bother us no more. I mean, he was high tailing it. Good. Fine. Josh Clemens, oh, you are. What happened, Josh? What happened to you? It's fine. I'll be all right, man. Oh, those are whip marks. Who did? Come on, we have to get you in the house, get this shirt off, and get these cuts cleaned up. Don't bother with that. Now, just. That's just plain silly. I made it here, didn't? I? Well, I don't know how. Now, just do what I say. Go inside. Sit down over here. Come on with me. Just easy, this. Just sit down right there. Oh, Josh, not to see you for such a long time and then to have it be like this. I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is not exactly the way I'd have picked it either. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. It'll heal in no time. Is Andy still at the mill? Yeah. Yeah, but he would back shortly, I expect. Let me help you. you know, the way you came in here, anybody think you cared more about that guitar than you care about yourself? 
Like I said, I'll heal. But a thing like that could get busted for good. Oh, that'll be Andy, I expect. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, Josh. I, I'm really trying very hard not to hurt you. I didn't feel a thing. If you asked me, I couldn't have found a better doctor in a thousand miles. Josh! I did it to you again, Andy. No advance notice whatsoever. What in heaven's name? He had a little run-in with some of our fine, upstanding neighbors over at Vogel's place. I just wanted to see the place again. Boy, they didn't like that one little bit. It was worthless, no good. I told him it was probably Bill Archer and, and Alex Stokes. Wouldn't you think they were probably in on that pack? It's a fine town, isn't it, with people like that running around loose? Andy, get me that shirt, would you? Yeah. Well, they, they can't be cleared out in a day or a month even. You know that. Yes, I know that. I also know that if somebody doesn't do something soon, they are going to sap the life out of everything and everybody that is left here, if they haven't already. This sort of fits you. Gosh, get you home anyway. It's a second gift from you today. I'll see to it that this is just alone. And not that guitar. That's mine for good. Because I got a feeling this is one of the last ones he ever made, or ever will make. If my guess is right about what happened to him. But I told you, he left. A couple of years ago, you said. Except I don't think he left, Dan, and I don't think you do either. What do you mean by that? A little while ago, I remembered the date on this guitar. 79, Andy. That was a full year after you said he'd left for good. Well, maybe it, maybe it was later. Or maybe he didn't leave at all. I didn't say this to Amanda. I wanted to wait till you got here. But what I think is, Andy, that they hung him. What? They strung him up to a tree on his own property and then buried him not ten feet from where they hung him. Now, where would you get such an idea? What does it matter where he got the idea? You know it's true. Why don't you say it? You don't know what you're talking about. You never in your life even been over there. I never had to be. Andy, how long are we going to keep on knowing what's true and pretending it isn't? And never saying anything between us. Now, he's come here out of the blue, and he said it out loud. So let it be said. Andy, the reason I came was thought we'd get a spade, and tonight we'd find out for sure. I don't guess it's necessary now. After all that talk going on about him, somebody from here happened to see him outside Philadelphia. He was with a Hessian officer. That's all those hotheads needed, that and more rum. I tried to reason with them, but they wouldn't listen. I still never thought they'd do such a thing. I never thought he would either. Did he finally admit it? They claimed he didn't have to. He never so much as opened his mouth. Not one word of defense. Well, no wonder. Amanda, will you keep your... No. No, I won't. Andy, please tell him the rest. What difference does it make now? All right, I'll tell you. When it was all over, they went over to his place and they ransacked it. All his things, his papers, his letters. And you know what they found? They found that he had done a very secret, very important special thing for the revolution. He couldn't talk about it. And so he didn't. And that was the man that they hanged. And nobody has ever done anything about it. All right, I did nothing about it and I'm guilty of it. What did you expect me to do? Bring him down on you? Scum like that, do you think they'd hesitate a minute if they... Thought they could save their own necks? Andy, uh, 
maybe the reason you haven't done anything is because you, you didn't have anybody to stand along with you. It hasn't helped. Well, you've got somebody now. No, I won't have that on my conscience, too. Why do you think I lied to you about Vogel? Yes, and about our leaving tomorrow. To get you out of town, keep you safe and clear of all this, and that's how you're going to stay. Andy, he's offering to help you. Do you think it would undo anything? Do you think it would bring Vogel back to life? I'm telling you for your own good, Josh. I want you to leave here and forget all about this. I want you to promise that. Another place. Another man. Maybe. Forget it. I can't do that, Andy. Did you have something in mind? To get out of here first and then find Daniel Boone, and I'll guarantee you that he will split this thing from end to end and everybody who's got anything at all to do with it. You know if that bunch, any one of them, caught you, found out what you were planning, you know what they'd do? Try to kill me, I guess. It's the only choice they got. Still have your rifle? No. Well, I can get us each one. Although I'm pretty sure I can get us out. There's some backwood trails you maybe forgot. I'll go on down to the mill and make some arrangements in case I'm held up a while. And as soon as I get back, we can take off. Andy? You know that if they catch you with me, they're going to try to kill you too. Like you said about them, there comes a time when a man's run out of a choice. You uh, might want to feed your horse meanwhile. Oh, and you can tell Amanda she can do something about that for us, too. I'll tell her all of it, Andy. I heard it all. Oh, Josh, I know it's dangerous, but I'm so grateful to you just for what it can mean to him. And to you, too, I suspect. Mm -hmm. Amanda, I'd be lying if I said I hadn't noticed a difference. Well, I wish you could have seen him a while back. And the work was just going right along, speeding along. Why, he'd leave here in the morning, and it was like he was full of plans. It was like he needed more men and more land and maybe even a larger mill. It was like nothing could stop him. But something did. Friends left. Friends with their children started leaving. Tell me, Josh, since you've been here, have you seen even one small child? Yeah, yeah, even met one. Yeah, well, that was Tim Stokes. How'd you know? Because he's the only child there is here. He's the only one left. Just that one little boy. Some way to grow up. Some place to grow up to. Oh, it's got to change, Josh. Or else it's got to just curl up on itself and die of hate and meanness. One or the other. Well, Andy and me will see what we can do. I know you will. Hi, Jim. Mr. Warden? How'd you like to make yourself a shilling? A shilling? Uh-huh. Buy a lot of feed for that bird. Now, all you got to do is take the fastest cut home to your paws, then over to Mr. Archer's, and then to Mr. Lane's. Oh, well, I'll catch him again tomorrow. Anyhow, I can run faster without him. Well, maybe this will help still more. You tell them that I want them to ride straight over to the tree. The tree? Uh-huh. They'll know what I mean. You tell them I'll be there just as soon as I can. Now off with you. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Josh, up ready in this trail. No, it's a new one to me. Well, we're not apt to run across to anybody, that's for sure. It'll swing us past the town and lead us to the main road on the far side. he left how did you know that he was leaving he told me i mean he paid me just a while ago to have my pa meet him mr archard and mr lane too meet him what are you talking about tim well he give me two shillings ma'am and i reckon i didn't earn them not both of them because mr lane he wasn't to home and i couldn't tell him where he was to go and that's why i thought listen to me where was he to go to meet them he said to the tree, he said that they would know where he met. Ma'am, is something wrong? I mean, I'd done what I could. Do you know where the tree is? He never said what tree. Th then do you know Mr. Vogel's place? Do you know the land around it? Tim, have you ever been there? Do you know it? I better go now, ma'am. No. No, wait, you... You listen to me. Today, did you meet a man called Josh Clements? He just said his name is Josh, is all. Did you like him? Yes, some I did. Would you help him if you could? If there was still time? Hey, hold it, Andy. You know, I must have been wrong about your trail. Maybe I have been on it before, or at least this part of it. Of course, you can't tell much of anything at night. You hear anything? No. Keeps reminding me of Vogel's place. Hey, by the way, I meant to ask you, what happened to that? I mean, who got it? Oh, I heard he had a brother, an uncle someplace. Look, Josh, we'd better get going. I don't know where you could hurt a thing like that. He never had a relative to his name. I must have heard wrong. Somebody to sure wanted it. Stream, all that timber. Made a bigger mill site than even yours, Andy. Why did that? As a matter of fact, from what a kid told me, somebody did want it. They wanted it bad enough to make Vogel say he wouldn't leave it no matter what. Well, I wouldn't know about that. Then I kept thinking. Who around here more than anybody else could make the best use of that property once it was his. And what did you come up with? Andy, what would you say if I told you to hand over your gun? Well, I'd tell you to just keep going the way we were going. And do that now. Because you know yours is loaded and mine's not, is that right? That's about it. What did you say if I told you that I made a little check back at the house and switched rifles with you? That's proof, Andy. Up to now, I've just been guessing. Hold it, mister. We're a dead man. Seems like we just can't get rid of you, Clements. Get over there. Lucky you didn't this time. He was on his way to see Boone. At least he thought he was. Yeah, that's right, he knows. Should have taken care of him the last time. Get down, Clements. Archer, get his horse. I want him standing clear. Move away. You 
going to do his job again for him. So he can have you at his mercy and his beck and call. Don't listen to him. Do what you have to. Yeah, you do it. Not him, you. But at least this time, get something out of it. Or maybe you did before. Like a hunk of this land. Pay him no mind, Stokes. Come on. He got you to kill Vogel for him. Enough of the right kind of talk and a little rum. Then he took over this property. Did he share any of that with you? He's trying to trick you. Can't you see that? Look around you. You see a mill running? Trees cut, money pouring in? Anything at all worth sharing? No. And they never will. Because out of greed, you poisoned the thing you wanted most. You started a plague going, and he wiped out a whole town. Now, who's the biggest fool of the lot? I'd say you right now. Put that down. Tim! Why did you do that? Why did you have to bring him here? Because I had no other choice. He knew the shortest way. Get out of here. You got no business here. It's my whole life, Andy. What little precious bit of it you've left me. Everything I'd done was for you. This place? This is for me? And what Josh said, that was the way you got it? Well, let somebody try and prove it. You already have. At least to me. You've poisoned this place, this whole town, and everything there ever was between us. You're guilty, and I say you are. <laughs> Now there's, there's still the matter of us. You ain't gonna do a thing, aren't you? Not a thing. I've had about all of this a body can stand. It's gonna be all right now, boy. Well, anyhow, it won't be no worse. They said they'd start the trial as soon as I got there. Naturally, they wanted to know all about Stokes. Thought maybe I might be able to help him out a little. Not that Stokes asked for it. He said he is satisfied with things as is, just knowing the boy had a good home. <laughs> well, look at you. Did you hear anything from the governor's office about the mill? Just that they wish we were back in full swing. Such a big need for cut timber. They didn't say anything about mill worker? No, what do you mean? Well, they're sending some. Family men, most of them. That means wives and kids, new homes. How's that set with you? All this, just so you could get a new guitar. I'll tell you one thing. There ain't no Indian gonna bust this one up. What can I say to you, Josh? I'll tell you what. Every time you hear a certain little tune, you think old Josh, all right? What tune? Do I know it? You will. Oh, you will. There. And you play it pretty. But not too often, you hear? <laughs> 